Welcome to Next Level Church Online. My name is Jason and I'm so happy you took these few moments to be here with us today in church. We are in church, even at home, you can enjoy church. So before we start, let me tell you of a few things to help you navigate this virtual experience. Whether you're watching on Facebook or on the online platform, we have hosts ready to fully engage with you, share scriptures, share the points, and just really engage back and forth with you. Don't be afraid to hit the hearts, like, and even share the sermon. So in a few moments, we're getting ready to start the service. You're going to hear some relevant preaching and passionate, authentic worship. So don't go anywhere. Grab your coffee and let's get ready to have virtual church.
Hello, welcome to the Next Level Online Service. So honored that you're here and that you're joining us today. My name is Rob Shepard. I'm the lead pastor at Next Level, and we think it's incredible that you've joined us today. I wanna let you know what you're in for today. In just a few moments, uh, we're gonna sing with our worship team, and I wanna invite you, wherever you're watching this at, participate in singing. Singing is an amazing way to get our attention off of ourselves and put our attention on to God. You're also gonna hear an amazing, relevant message, and I can't wait for you to hear that because today we're kicking off a brand new series. And I wanna invite you to take some notes, to engage, to write some things down and apply what you learned today. We're also gonna make sure that we help you know how you can get connected to our church. In fact, if this is your very first time watching this, stay tuned, because I'll tell you your first step to getting connected to Next Level Church. But before we get into all that, I wanna pray for us, and then we'll have some time of worship. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for every person who's watching this, God. And I ask God that you would just speak and move through this service, that this time would not be wasted, but it would be fruitful. We thank you for what you're gonna do and for how you're gonna do it. In Jesus' name, amen.
us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the chance to worship your holy and righteous name. God, we give ourselves to you, knowing that you know best and you control all. We are so grateful for your presence, God, and we will forever give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. I mentioned this at the very beginning of the service, but if you're brand new, I want to help you know your first step to getting connected to Next Level Church. If this is your first time watching, or even if you've just been checking it out a couple times, uh, we'd like to invite you to take the Stick for Three Challenge. The Stick for Three Challenge is simply to, to come back, to be a part of, of what we're doing, and to visit a service three times. We do this because we find it's hard to discover if a church can be your church after just one visit. And ultimately, what we want from you is for you to find a church where you can plug into, where you can be known, where you can give back and use your gifts and talents. And we don't want this just to be something that you consume, just some, some information. And so the first step to see if, if, if this is it could be your church is to simply come. You're here. You've done that. Your next step is the Stick for Three Challenge. A number is going to come up on the screen. And if you will text WELCOME to the number on the screen, We'll help get you connected by, by simply uh, giving you a free gift. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You just text the number. We'll give you a free gift. And then after the three visits that you come, you can decide if Next Level is your church or not. And here's the deal. If Next Level is not your church, we're totally cool with that. We understand. We're not the church for everybody. In fact, we want to help you find a church. If, if we're not the church that's going to help you grow and, and learn to love Jesus, love people, and make a difference, we'd love to introduce you to some amazing churches that can help you do just that. So if you're interested in taking the Stick for Three Challenge, simply text WELCOME to the number on the screen. So coming up in just a few weeks, we are so excited to host our Christmas services, December 22nd and December 23rd. Now here's something that you need to know. We have a theme for our Christmas service and our Christmas services, the theme is we love the 90s. That's right, we love the 90s. And you can participate. If you're even watching this online, you can, you can dress up in 90s gear. You can play with your Tamagotchi and get things out of your fanny pack and, and drink some Surge soda. You can do whatever you want to fit in with the 90s service. It's it's going to be absolutely amazing in all things 90s and all things Christmas. But here's something that you need to know. If you're watching online, you can, that's great. But if you're deciding to come in person, our in-person services, we are, are requiring a free ticket. And this is because we have to limit the seating capacity of how many people can come because of the coronavirus and the social distancing and, and all of that things. We have to make sure that we don't have too many people enter the building. And so the way that we've done that is we have issued some free tickets. If you go to our website, nextlevelchurch.net, you can get your free ticket. Now, here's another thing that you need to know. Um, as a part of our services, our, our physical services, we are offering childcare birth through kindergarten. And so if you're deciding to come, you can you can bring kids if, if you want to. It's going to be a kid-friendly service, but birth through kid, we'll have, we'll have child care. Uh, but the key thing that you need to know is that if you're coming to the physical service, you need a ticket. And I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss this. We love the 90s Christmas edition. Well, in just a few moments, you're going to meet our kids and student pastor, Eric Ashley, as he kicks off a brand new series. And this is a series that's going to inspire you. It's going to help get you ready for Christmas. And uh, in fact, it's, it's based off a very famous Christmas movie and a question that is asked in that movie, the best way to spread Christmas cheer. And I can't wait for you to hear from our kids and student pastor, Eric Ashley, in just a few moments. But before he comes, check out this video. While 2020 has been a difficult year, hope is still here. Christmas is all about the hope, joy, and peace that Jesus can bring. As the church, we get the honor of helping bring this good news to the world. Join Pastor Eric and together we'll learn about the best way to spread Christmas cheer. Hey, what's up, Next Level Church? Pastor Eric coming to you from the comfort of my home as I experience a little COVID quarantine. Uh, so I did not want to spread the vid to any of you, but I do want the opportunity to spread the word. And so we are going to kick off a brand new series today 
and we're going to have a lot of fun together. But, but to get us started, I want you to think about your favorite Christmas movie. Um, I, I know there's a lot of them, a lot of really great Christmas movies, but I want you to think about what, um, if you really could only watch one or one that you watch every single year, I want you to think of that movie, okay? And in just a moment, on the count of three, I want you to, to say that movie out loud. Um, whether you have somebody beside you or not, this is an all play. We're all going to participate. So, have, have you got your movie in mind? I know I do. You ready? One, two, three, Elf. I wonder if anybody else is Elf your favorite movie. I absolutely love this movie. It, it's uh, it's it's like comedy and romance and goofiness, all the a lot of things that I absolutely love um, in in movies. Well, um, the movie Elf was a bit of an inspiration for the series that we're uh, beginning today, which is called the best way to spread Christmas cheer. If you know anything about Elf, you know that that Buddy is a guy that he loves Christmas and he wants everybody to be in the spirit and he does whatever he can to help bring people's spirits up. Well, um, we are going to uh, begin by talking about a scene from the movie Elf. Now, I wish I could show it to you, but you know, copyright. So what we're going to have to do is I'm just going to have to um, tell you about it. Hopefully you've seen the movie. If you haven't, you can. Uh, it's a great one to watch with your whole family. Well, the scene that that I was thinking of with this um, with this series that we're beginning today is the first time that Buddy meets a girl named Jovi. And the truth is that for Jovi, she's not really in the Christmas spirit. So the first time they meet, she makes this, this statement to him and she says, I'm just trying to get through the holidays. Now, I think so many of us can relate to this, this idea of I'm just trying to get through. Um, 2020 has been a year that people have just said, hey, I'm just trying to get through this year. Or I'm just trying to get through this month. Or I'm just trying to get through this week. For me, uh, I'm just trying to get through this quarantine. Right? But, you know, if we're, if, we're, if we're honest, we've all had moments when we were just trying to get through. Instead of, like, loving life, embracing life, and all the, the joys that come with it, maybe our circumstances have brought us to a place where we feel like we're just trying to get through. Well, in response to this statement, Buddy says this. He says, get through. Christmas is the greatest day in the whole wide world. And I love it. Right after that, Jovi just says, please stop talking to me. He says, sounds like someone needs to sing a Christmas carol. And she says, go away. And this is where we get the line that is the title of this series. He says, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is, do you know the next line? If you do, say it with me, singing loud for all to hear. You, you see, this is a, a truth that Buddy had learned early on in his uh, elf school, so to speak. I've got a picture. It's going to jump up on your screen. Buddy in, in elf school. Um, and this is where they were repeating one of the, the mantras. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to cheer. Well, what does, what does Elf, what does Buddy have to, to teach us about, uh, about this season and, and more importantly, our faith? And, and here's the question I want us to ponder. What if we were as excited as Buddy is about spreading true Christmas cheer? What if we had as much passion and, uh, and just joy in helping others experience the real joy of Christmas. Now, here's the truth. Um, Elf is a story about Santa and elves and things like that. And if you uh, know the scripture, you know that that is not what the true Christmas story is all about. Those things can all be fun. But the story of Christmas is a story of the birth of our Savior coming into the world in order to, to rescue us. And, and you know what, after this season, there's a lot of things I love about this season. I love uh, putting up Christmas lights and decorating and food and exchanging gifts. I love all those things. But the truth is, is that the tree will get put away. The lights will get put away. The food will um, go away. We'll forget what presents we gave and what we received. And those things don't really last. But what we're talking about is how do we spread the type of cheer that last uh, through, throughout the year. 
Um, the type of cheer that doesn't leave us uh, from season that um, isn't just like a month or two months long for those of you that started uh, decorating uh, way back in November. That's okay. We love you. Um, we're talking about how can you and I be a part of helping um, bring joy and hope to people that desperately need it. Can we all agree that our world really does need a message of hope and joy? So for the next two Sundays, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at what the Bible teaches us about the best way to spread Christmas cheer. And that brings us to today's scripture and then to our big idea. If you have a Bible or a Bible app, go ahead and open it up. We're going to be looking at one of Jesus' famous sermons, Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to begin in verse 14. And this is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where um, it's his most famous sermon, and thousands of people are listening to him give this. And, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to jump right in to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, dot, dot. 14 to 16. Well, uh, so Jesus is talking about how you and I are called to be lights in this world. And, and that uh, leads right into what our big idea is. Our big idea is the focus for this whole message. If you're taking notes, I hope that you'll write this down. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is to shine your light for all who are near. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is to shine your light for all who are near. Hey, could we just uh, stop just for a moment and ask for God's blessing on the time that we have together as we study His Word. Um, let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you for your Word. We thank you um, for your Son, Jesus, to come that came and, and uh, taught us what it means to be lights in this world. Uh, God, our, our world needs light. Uh, it's filled with so much darkness. And I pray that you would inspire us today, move us today, challenge us today, um, convict us to be um, the lights that shine out into the dark places. We pray this in your name. Amen. So I think that light is something that we take for granted, especially in, in our society. Think about it. Um, if you're in a dark room, you could just walk in, flip a switch, and boom lights everywhere i mean at the at the flip of a switch we've got light uh, if you're driving and all of a sudden it starts getting dark you just turn that that little lever on your car and boom you've got lights all in front of you uh, we've got so much light that we even have something called light pollution, which basically means we've got so much artificial light that um, it, it just clouds up into the sky that so in some places you can't even uh, see the stars. So think about that. We've got so much access to light that we even have light pollution. But, you know, it wasn't like this in Jesus' day. Um, light was not as abundant. Once the, the sun went down, um, there weren't a lot of sources of light. There, no one could go and flip a light switch. There were no cars with uh, lights. There's no electricity light bulbs. Basically, people had to have candles in their, in their homes or maybe in the cities. They had some torches that were lit around the city. But the contrast between light and dark was so much more prevalent. And, and the value of light, I think, um, was really, uh, it, it was held on to by, by the people in Jesus' day. And I think this is one of the reasons that Scripture uses this contrast between light and dark so often. You know, uh, we see that throughout the Scripture that um, darkness always represents uh, evil and blindness and, and the uninhabitable, the, the unknown, it, it represents these things as uh, in, in the negative. Uh, let me just give you one scriptural example. Proverbs 4.19 says this, The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they will stumble. 
So it, it says that when people aren't following after God, it's like walking in deep darkness. Have you ever been somewhere where like you can't see your hand in front of in front of your face? It's just the darkest dark that you can that you can think of. The scripture describes that that is the plight of all people apart um, from being in a relationship with God. That we have all been walking in darkness. Uh, it doesn't take very much explanation for me to explain to you that we have been that we have a lot of darkness around us, um, all around our world. We've got um, you know at, before we finish this um, this message together. Around the world, someone will have lost their life through murder. Someone will have been kidnapped. Someone would be put into sex slavery. Um, there would be a relationship that, that breaks up. Someone will probably steal something. I mean, who knows? Maybe a porch pirate right now. It's stealing something off of, off of your front steps that you order from Amazon. Or um, somebody's embezzling money. On and on and on. We could go. The world is just filled with so much darkness. But then in contrast to that, Scripture speaks of light in these, in these positive ways to represent hope and goodness and, and how light has the ability to overcome the darkness. And this is why the prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of Jesus. And he says these words in Isaiah 9-2. He says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. So when Jesus looks out at, at all these people listening to his sermon, um, these people that are following after him, and he describes them and us as light, that would have grasped them. They would have immediately seen the value that Jesus was placing on them, on their lives, and the purpose that he had for them. And that brings us to the first thing um, that we see in Jesus' words is Jesus reveals our identity. Write that down, our identity. Matthew 5, 14. This is what Jesus, uh, how he describes our identity uh, in and through him. He says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Now think about that. You're not just the, simply the light in, in, your, in your home. You're not just the light in one particular area that collectively the body of Christ, as followers of Jesus, we are meant to be lights throughout the entire world. Man, that is huge. And you know what makes this even more profound is when we see this statement that you are the light of the world in light of a statement that Jesus made in his ministry. In John 8, 12, we have these words of Jesus recorded. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Do you see that? Jesus is the light. Jesus was the light that the prophet Isaiah and the others looked forward to, the light that was going to come into the dark world and, and the one that was going to show the world what it really means to follow fully after, after God. And Jesus says he's the light of the world, but now he's turning to his disciples and saying, you are the light of the world. Isn't that amazing that Jesus shares his light with us, that our identity is tied into him, that just as Jesus came to shed light over in the dark places, to bring hope to the hopeless, to overcome evil with goodness, that he says that we have that same task. Believer, if as you're listening to this today, I, I pray that you'll just be overwhelmed by the privilege that you and I have um, by the identity of being lights in this world. You know, the, the truth is, is that Jesus claimed that he is the only true light. You know, there's a lot of religions, there's a lot of, of pathways out there that claim to lead people to enlightenment. But it's only Jesus only Jesus, the one who lived and died and rose again, the God in flesh, he is the only one that truly brings light. Ultimately, all other pathways are pathways that ultimately end in darkness. And he says, you get to be light bearers because we get to reflect Jesus. That is our identity. And doesn't the world desperately 
need that light. So that's the reason we're saying the best way to spread Christmas cheer is to shine your light for all who are near. And that brings us to the second thing we see in Jesus' words is first we saw our identity, but next I want you to see our placement. You know, it matters where light is placed. Matthew 5, 14 through 15, we read these words. You are the light of the world, and now Jesus is going to give a, uh, a description. They, you know, as Jesus is teaching this, there, there's actually a city that um, is on a hill near them that they could probably have turned to look to. It says, a town on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? I mean, it's just common sense. A town on a hill, it can't be hidden. You can't hide it. Now, uh, why? It's just out in the open for everyone to see. And he, in verse 15, he says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Do you know if we don't place the light in the proper position, if it doesn't have the right placement, it's not going to serve its ultimate purpose, which is to what? To shine. To, to get rid of the darkness. You know, there is an absurdity to the idea that we would light a light and then cover it up. That defeats the whole purpose. That's the reason one New Testament scholar, in reflecting on Jesus' words, had this to say. He says, a disciple of the kingdom who does not live like a disciple of the kingdom is worth as, about as much as tasteless salt or invisible lights. Think about that. We are called to be lights and to shine, but if we cover over our light, if we hide the light of Jesus, then we're like invisible lights. Think of it like this. I, I don't know about you, but I like movies that have people that go undercover. They're like secret agents. But here's the problem. There should be no secret agents in, in the kingdom of God. The problem is, is that too many of us that profess the name of Christ, that we're living like we are uh, undercover Christians or that we are secret agent Christians. And what I mean is this, is unfortunately there's a lot of people that name the name of Christ, say that I'm a Christian, but if we went to your workplace or, or we went to your home and we asked people, we said, hey, tell me about so-and-so and, and, uh, and about their, their Christian faith, and they'd be like, what? They're not a Christian. Oh, they don't ever talk about Jesus. They don't ever talk. No, no, there's no way. Oh, man, they, they cuss it up like me. They do all the stuff I do. They sleeping around just like me. They getting drunk all the time just like me. They, nah, they're not a Christian. You see, that's, that's the problem is, is that sometimes instead of us living out our purpose of shining light into the world, that our light gets covered over. But there are no uh, anonymous Christians, secret Christians that are supposed to be in the world. Instead, we're supposed to be properly placed to shine light to all who are in the house, all who are near to us. So I started thinking about what, why, why is it that sometimes that our light gets covered? I mean, our identity, if you are in Christ, if you have said yes to Jesus, placed your faith in Him, said, yes, you're my Lord and Savior, then you have His light shining in you. But sometimes we cover over that light. Why is that? Well, I've just got just a couple of reasons that I think happens. Sometimes um, it's just that we have conformity. We have chosen to conform more to the world instead of conforming to Jesus. The scripture reveals to us, Romans 8, that our, our destiny, that where, where we are supposed to be going, the trajectory of our lives, is that we're supposed to be conformed to the image of Jesus. That means that when people look at us, that they should see Jesus. But sometimes we look more like people that don't know Jesus. We have become more conformed to the world. And let's admit that it becomes easy to do. Um, I recently watched a movie that portrayed uh, Christians, and honestly, as I watched the movie, it kind of frustrated me how Christians were portrayed because they were just uh, judgmental and just um, hypocritical, and I mean, just everything. But I was like, man, that is not how Christians should be. But the truth is, is sometimes we are, or or sometimes we name the name of Jesus, but we don't really reflect Him in our actions. That we live pretty much the same way as as 
people that are supposedly walking in darkness. So why is it that, that those of us that the light of Jesus has shone in our life, why are we still walking in darkness? And sometimes when we're doing that, we're covering over our light. Uh, sometimes I think the reason our light gets covered over is we just get complacent. We get comfortable. We don't really want to rock the boat. We're like, yeah, I don't really want to bring up, I don't want to be one of those Jesus, Jesus freak people in front, of, uh, in front of the people I work with. You know, we got a pretty good thing going. And so we just become comfortable um, how, how we are. We don't want to rock the boat. We know that maybe if we start talking about our faith that people would be uncomfortable. And, you know, we're afraid of me making people uncomfortable. We're afraid of offending people. But here, I do want to say something. You, the message of, of Jesus is an offensive message. It says that we're all sinners. That we all fall short of God's glory. That, that everything is not right in our life. That we, uh, we are not as good as we think that we are. That's an offensive message to people. But you can say an offensive message in a way that doesn't bring extra offense. What I mean is you can share about Jesus without being a jerk. You can share with people about how you were just as lost as, as they were. That you were walking in darkness. Not as though you're better than anybody else. See, we can... We can share the message in a loving way, even though it's a message that will offend people. But sometimes we're just, we like our comfort. Or maybe we've become conformed to the world. Or maybe this last thing is maybe we've lost our conviction. Maybe we've lost the conviction that the world is lost and walking in darkness. Maybe we've lost the conviction that if, that if people die apart from being in Christ, that they will spend eternity separated from Him. Have we lost that conviction? Do our hearts not burn for those that are far from God, that those that are walking in, in darkness? Have we forgotten how at one time we were all walking in darkness, following the ways of this world, but Jesus, He shone His light into our lives to rescue us? And that really brings us to, to the last part of what Jesus says. And this is really the most important thing. Jesus has let us know that our identity is light. And he's told us that our placement is that we should be properly placed so that the world can see our light, not to cover over it. And that brings us to the last part is our purpose. What's the purpose? Why did Jesus make our identity as lights? Why has he said that we need to be placed in the world so that we shine light to those who are near us? to us. Let's look at verse 16. It says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now I want you to, uh, let's, let's read it one more time. In the same way, let your light shine before people. Don't cover it up. Don't hide it. Bring it out into the open. Don't be ashamed of your faith. That they may do two things. One, See your good deeds. And number two, glorify your Father in heaven. Now, the word used for good deeds could also be translated as attractive or beautiful. Now, it's true that we're not supposed to do our, our good deeds in front of others so that we get praise. But here, we're told the proper motivation for doing good deeds. It's not to earn God's favor but it's so that people will be pointed toward our Heavenly Father. So think about this. What might be some good deeds that you could do that would start pointing people toward Jesus? I want you to just think about it just for a moment. What could be a good deed that you could do that could point people toward Jesus? I'll give you a story from um, when I was growing up, something that really impacted me. So my, my dad, I mean, he worked um, the swing shifts, first, second, third shift. He was super busy, but every summer my dad always made time um, to do something. There were a lot of widows in our community that they could not take care of their, um, of their yard work anymore. And honestly, they couldn't pay for somebody to come do it. And so my dad decided that he would go around and, and cut their grass for free. Now, the truth is, is most of the time that they wanted to give him something, so it usually ended up being like a, a soda, um, a sandwich, 
um, and really just some some gratitude and and I got the privilege of coming along with my dad and it was something that he showed me and now I look back at that and what my dad was doing is he was doing a good deed so that people would be pointed to Jesus and my dad was always very open about his faith of you know hey I'm thankful to, to be able to do this that that God has given me the energy to do this and he always pointed the direction back to to Jesus so I, think about it are there people around you that could benefit from something like that are there some people in your neighborhood that Maybe they're alone and they could use some help or around their yard. Or maybe you're not handy with that, that kind of thing. Um, is there someone that maybe is lonely that you could just write them a note? Just take time to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Is there someone that's in that grocery line that, um, that maybe you could for whatever reason they didn't have enough money maybe you could um, say hey I'll take care of some of those those groceries for you I, I don't know what it is I don't know what the good deed that God is calling you to do but here's what I do know that God is calling us to do good works not so that people will look at us and pat us on the back but so that people will be pointed to our Heavenly Father the Heavenly Father that loved us so much that he sent his one and only son into the world to be the light so that we could hear the good news that we can be forgiven and that we can have abundant life not only in this life but in the age to come so in the same way let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven so if you've been listening to this today, maybe you recognize that you're someone that you have not been letting your light shine as you should. And I didn't bring this message to you to condemn you, to, to put you down, to discourage you any more than Jesus did. Jesus spoke these words because he wanted to point us to our true identity and to our true purpose. That just as his light is shown into our lives, that the world needs to see that. You know, the world can't see our faith. Our faith is something that happens inside of us as we committed our hearts and lives to Christ. But they can see the overflow of our faith, which is our good deeds. And that brings us to today's win. The, the win is how do we go about applying this message? Here's the win. If you could write it down. Let your light shine by doing good deeds that point people toward Jesus. Let your light shine by doing good deeds that point people toward Jesus. Could you identify one good deed that you could do this week and give Jesus the credit for it? Or maybe there's two opportunities. What if over the next months we started saying, what are some good deeds that we can do? Maybe that would be a great opportunity that we serve someone. And, and maybe it's as simple as we invite them to watch our Christmas service online or to uh, come with us in person and, and, and learn more about Jesus. Are you willing to let your light shine? Are you willing to, in your workplace, start being a little bit more bold about your faith? In your family, that, that there's no question that if people talked about you, that they would say, oh man, yes, they're a sold out believer in Jesus. And we can begin showing that through our good deeds. So, during this Christmas season, let's be the type of people that are passionate about spreading Christmas cheer by shining our light for all who are near. Let's pray together. Father, I pray right now that everyone that's just heard this message, to God, that we will respond to it. That God, if we've been hiding our lights, that we'll confess that and we will uh, now, through your power, say we are going to shine our lights. That we're going to let our good deeds shine. That we're going to live up in accordance with our identity. Help us to do that. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thanks so much for joining us today. And I want to make sure that you know, if, if you have questions about Jesus or you want to meet him, or if you want to get to know him, or if you want to know what it means to be a Christian, we'd love to be a part of your spiritual journey. Here's what you can do. If you text the word faith to the number that's going to come up on the screen, we'll make sure that we get back to you and answer any questions that you have. And if you're ready to take that first step and, and meet Jesus and become a Christian, we'd love to introduce you and help you take that step. Well, thank you again so much for being here. And uh, I want you to know that if you're a part of Next Level Church uh, and you give back, if you're what we call an owner. An owner is someone who has stake in the game. An owner is someone who gives back to their church. And we're so thankful for the owners that we have at Next Level Church. And if you're one of the owners or if you wanna become one and you wanna give back financially to our church, then there's a couple ways that you can do that. The first is to go to our website at nextlevelchurch.net and you can give safely, securely. And that's actually my preferred way to give. Uh, I'm a forgetful person, I'm not great with details. And so I love going to the website because I can set up uh, recurring giving and it just does it for me. I don't even have to think about it anymore. The second way though that you can give is you can you can text the word give to 77977 and uh, it'll prompt you and let you know exactly what you need to do to set up set up giving. And I just want to say thank you because we can't do what we do without generous people like you. We're making a difference, not just in the 757, but in America and around the world. Thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here at Next Level Church. And thank you for watching this service today. We'll see you next week.